Hey, welcome to Zelsie's Corner. Today we'll be covering Star Fox and all the tree makes to compare the different versions and maybe find out which is the best one to play. Starting off with the original for this NES back in 93, Star Fox is a 3D rail shooter where the player takes control of Fox McCloud, who is the leader of the Star Fox team which contains Falco, Peppy, and Slippy. The goal of the game is to protect the homeworld Corneria from Andros, who was banished and fled across the Lilac system to the planet Venom. What makes Star Fox interesting is that the user gets to pick which route they want to go on. There is three routes with each of them being a different difficulty. Whichever route is chosen determines which locations the player will get to witness. As for the game itself, there really isn't much to say. The framerate is pretty bad, which I'm assuming is because this game is the first game to use this Super FX chip for the SNES. There's a lot of objects popping in at the last second, and because of how everything looks, it makes it kind of hard to determine the depth of everything and if something's an enemy or not. As you probably noticed, I've just been shooting everything because I'm honestly not sure. The game was very hard to play because of how bad I was experiencing motion sickness. And what's funny is that even when I used to go to my buddy's house to play the game, I remember being bothered by how the game presented itself, with all of its flashiness and the frame rate. While we are still on the topic, I want to mention that Star Fox had a sequel that was never released until the SNES Classic Edition, which means that the game came out about 20 years later. Both Star Fox and Star Fox 2 can be found on Nintendo Switch's online service. Since Star Fox 2 never came out, a lot of the ideas from Star Fox and Star Fox 2 were combined together to make Star Fox 64. For the most part, the game plays the same way. The biggest difference is that there's no longer a difficulty route that the player can decide on themselves. Instead, the player has to do certain tasks to unlock different planets. These can be like having to save someone before they take too much damage or shooting down enough enemies. The story is more fleshed out this time around with the prologue having its own prologue explaining about Fox's father being betrayed by someone on his team when they were asked to check out the Venom planet by General Pepper. Moving on to the gameplay side, there are two different gameplay styles, the 3D rail shooter named Corridor Mode and Free 3D Movement in particular location named All Range Mode. There are three vehicles this time around, the R-Wing which is used most of the time, the Landmaster, a ground tank-like vehicle which is used on Macbeth and Titanium, and lastly the Blue Marine, a submarine which is only used on the planet Aquas. Moving on to Star Fox 64 3D, the 3DS remake of the N64 title, there really isn't much to discuss here, and I'll do my best to blast through this because the gameplay footage is pretty disgusting, which I apologize for. Anyway, notable changes are starting the game for the first time. You'll be pushed into the tutorial where the game will explain what the buttons are and how to do everything. There's now two campaign modes, 64 mode and 3DS mode. 64 mode seems to have the same difficulty and have the same buttons as what it was on the 64 version, whereas the 3DS mode allows for gyro controls and is more forgiving. One interesting change has to do with the bottom screen, which is used for intercoms as opposed to the bottom of the screen, and it requires you to tap to receive them, although some messages from people come in regardless. Speaking of messages, I noticed that Wolf and Peppy have different voice actors than they did in the N64 version. Sadly, I wasn't able to capture any of the audio for the 3DS gameplay. The final version we'll be discussing is Star Fox Zero, which is the Wii U version of the game. The game feels like it's a reimagining of Star Fox 64, because if you look at them side by side, you can definitely see the inspiration. Just like in the 3DS version, you're forced into a tutorial which definitely makes sense this time around because dear god there is no way anyone can just wing it. For this game because everything's just a little weird. The gamepad is the cockpit from first person and the TV is a normal view you would be familiar with. With the caveat being that the R wing is slightly off centered so when you're aiming you'll have to look at the gamepad to properly line up the shot and look at the TV to move the R wing. It's possible to forego using the gamepad which is pretty much what I did. But then you'll have to hit the select button to swap to the first person mode on the TV because you will need to use that at some point. There are three different vehicles that all have their own transformation. The Arwing can become a bipedal walker, which kind of looks like a bird. The Landmaster can become the Gravmaster, and a new vehicle called the Gyrowing, which is a drone-like helicopter that can drop out this small little robot named Direct Eye, which can be used to hack computers or to drop explosive cubes on enemies. Outside of all of that, another change that bothered me is that the characters no longer constantly flap their mouth like they did in the earlier games. Now they properly move their lips. Everything else is pretty much the same, but it is a reimagining so locations will look different and the exact story beats might not happen in the exact same ways. Instead of having the intercoms come through the TV speakers, they've elected to make them come through the gamepad speakers. I wish there was a way to change it because the gamepad speaker just really isn't that good. Although the voice actors seem to be the same ones from the 3DS version. Half of the locations in the game are reimagined from the N64 version, and the other half can be completely new. It is possible that they are based on locations from other games, but I'm not familiar with the rest of the games in the franchise. This game has co-op in it, and this is where I believe it shines the best. One person plays using the gamepad, and they'll be in control of shooting everything, whereas the other player will use the TV to move the R-Wing. 
playing in co-op makes the game a lot more fun because you're no longer constantly just having to fight the controls since normally you'll be in control having to do both options. The game introduces a lock-on mechanic, but it's only useful for the cockpit view. And there are cutscenes which don't affect the cockpit view, so things get a little wonky if you didn't know what was going on. This game is significantly longer than any of the previous Star Fox games. It only comes out to be about 5 hours give or take, but OG Star Fox is like 5 stages, meaning it'll be done in less than an hour. And Star Fox 64 has longer and more stages, making close to about 2 hours. Now that we have ranted about all the games, let's see if we can figure out what version or versions are recommended and which ones are not. There's many different ways to go about this, and I'm going to be pretty opinionated. I did sit down and play all these games back to back. Surprisingly, I would probably say the best version to play is the 3DS version. It's essentially Star Fox 64 Plus. I believe with the updated controls and using a control that doesn't get stuck in the notches when it comes to steering is pretty solid. Even with the trouble I had playing the game. Yeah, the video that you see here is the video I also saw while playing, but I still enjoyed it. And hey, Nintendo just announced the expansion pass that allows N64 and Star Fox 64 is one of those games. And honestly, that's still a great way to play the game, which is why the 64 version would take second place. Visually, the game still looks good, the audio is solid, the controls could be a little better, and the game is a bit harder than most games by today's standards. And who knows, it might be possible with the Nintendo Online Services that they add a few things, like having motion controls, which would make the N64 version tied with the 3DS version in my eyes. Now this is where things get a little shaky. For me, visually, audio-wise, and gameplay-wise, OG Star Fox is very rough. Even playing the Nintendo Online Services version still has the same problems. But the game is simple, and it's just a product of its time, so it's respectable. Now, Star Fox Zero exists. It's just very strange. I feel that if you have a Wii U, and you have a friend to play with, then Star Fox Zero could be fun. There are some parts that are super tedious that might be better having someone else to work with you. Because for Star Fox Zero, the graphics and audio are amazing. The best the series has ever looked. But the game fights against you the entire time, which is the biggest flaw. I know I mentioned it all throughout this video, but it's only because everyone seems to have a Switch, and Nintendo Online Services is very cheap. But Star Fox and Star Fox 2 are both on there, and I would recommend checking them out at the very least. If you've already beaten the N64 version, then I would still recommend checking out Star Fox 2, because it's different enough, and you can see where a lot of stuff was pulled from. Although, if you beat Star Fox Zero, on behalf of everyone, I'm sorry. Anyway, if it wasn't clear enough, I would recommend Star Fox 64 3D and Star Fox 64. I would only recommend OG Star Fox if you want to check it out to see the roots of the franchise. And I wouldn't recommend Star Fox Zero unless you already have the game and have a friend to play it with. Quickly, I'll just like to hit some things that I wasn't sure where they would fit in this episode. I noticed that the SNES version has more control types than the N64 version. After playing SNES with having the controls being up is up and down is down, it was hard to play the N64 version since the controls are inverted. I play the rest of the games inverted by the way. The Switch Online N64 controller is supposed to have a built-in rumble, but I wonder how that's going to feel compared to having the rumble pack plugged into the controller. Prior to this episode, I never played Star Fox Zero. As you can see, I still have a sealed copy. And finally, in all games, right before the player starts a level, you can hear, Good luck! Well that's going to do it for today's episode, so if there's anything I missed, let me know, and I'll see you next time for Zesty's Corner.